From the same ice core samples, we notice that the medieval warming period was much warmer than what we're experiencing now. One widely circulated piece of climate denial nonsense purports to use legitimate evidence from Greenland ice cores to debunk the record of global warming. Displaying temperature records out of context and making the claim of legitimacy by citing the data and its primary author, Dr. Richard Alley, this popular propaganda piece pretends to be based on actual evidence when it is anything but. These images and text have been popularized on the anti-science blog What's Up With That, which has amplified the deception that Dr. Alley's carefully gathered data have somehow undermined the overall science of climate. Dr. Alley is indeed one of the world's most respected investigators of paleoclimate. Perhaps listening to what the man himself really says about his work would help us put this in perspective. You take this cylinder of ice, it's about that long and about that big around, and we make measurements on it and look at it, describe it, photograph it, and then roll it to the next person, and another one come in, and we do it over again, and we did that through two miles of ice. Two miles. Two miles of ice. How do you extract two miles of ice? And we're talking about uh, a vertical extraction. extraction. With a big drill. <laughs> so they've got a drill that would be like a pipe and, and there's a hole in the bottom as well as the top. And it, it's just like drilling a hole in the door to, to make a hole for the doorknob. Except instead of drilling through something that's deep, we actually took about six meter pieces at a time and then we lump those into one meter pieces. So you're, you're looking at 20 foot long chunk that would come out and then you go down and get another one and go down and get another one and go down and get another one and that was five years. Five years to drill two miles. Oh, yes. <laughs> how, how can a history of climate be reconstructed from an ice core? What makes ice such a great record keeper? Inside of this ice core is trapped the environment from about 50,000 years ago. One of the things you can easily see in this ice core are small bubbles. That's the atmosphere trapped at the time that this particular ice was formed. One of the classic stories of climate history is how polar explorer Claude Lorius first recognized the potential of ice as a time capsule. One evening, a bunch of us were in the caravan, and we were a bit fed up. So we took a piece of ice that we never should have used. It was intended for analysis. And we put it in a glass of whiskey. And so I thought the air and the bubbles was a bit under pressure because it came from the depths. And so it struck me, couldn't this be the air of our atmosphere? In the air bubbles trapped in the ice, we were able to reconstitute the composition of the atmosphere. And so about 30 years ago, whereas we had imagined that greenhouse gases could play a part, we proved it for the first time by comparing climate variation and greenhouse gas variations that we measured in the air bubbles. And that's when we wrote almost 30 years ago now, if we emit greenhouse gases, it's going to get warmer. And that's exactly what's happening now. Each layer records what was happening in the Earth's atmosphere at the time the ice was formed. Whether it's the traces of a huge natural disaster or pollution from human activity, it's all frozen and perfectly preserved. We can see that this ice core is beautifully layered and we can ask of it, what happened, what was coming through the atmosphere at that time? Uh, is there ash and acids from a big volcano? Is there lead from Roman lead refining or what have you? So there's this history of what was blowing through the air and piling up on top of the Greenland ice sheet sitting here in these beautiful layers. So we know, for example, in um, 1954, we blew up an island in, in the Pacific with an atomic bomb, and um, the fallout from that is around the world. And you can find that fallout in the ice. It came in 1955, so we can count down to 1955, say this had better be hot. You look for how hot it is, and we got it right. 
And then we know in 1783, Ben Franklin is in, in Paris representing the young United States. He sees these dry blue fogs blowing across and he says there must be a big volcano somewhere. Well, the people in Iceland knew what they were having a terrible time because Lockheed was erupting and it was putting fluorine on the fields and the sheep were dying and, and pieces of Lockheed end up in Greenland. And if we count down to 1783, we had better find pieces of the volcano with the right chemical composition sitting there. And so all the way through written history, we can check. We can actually say this is Vesuvius and Elgin, Hecla and Catla and Lockheed and so on. And so we know it works. You have determined from looking at these ice cores that the climate changes have ranged from the slow and gradual to the fast and dramatic. In fact, abrupt climate change. How abrupt? We've seen changes that are sort of northern Alabama to southern Maine in 10 years. But the most important measurement preserved in the layers is the temperature. The ice that Ali brought back to the lab was, in effect, the annual weather reports since the beginning of the last ice age. What he was looking for was changes in the amount of so-called heavy water held in the ice. The basic rule, the more heavy water, the warmer the climate. If the conventional wisdom about climate change was true, then when he plotted the results, he would expect to see slow changes in heavy water as the world warmed and cooled during the last ice age. But that's not what he found. This flabbergasted us. I think this flabbergasted a lot of people. The changes were anything but slow. And the theory is, if uh, climate change has been abrupt in the past, that there's every reason to believe that it could be abrupt in the future. It surely might be. If you look at the history, we see most of the time the climate's well behaved. It's changing slowly, it's changing gradually, we understand what's going on, and just occasionally you get these big jumps. So over the last 100,000 years in Greenland, there's 20 odd really big jumps. And so if you look at the future and you see sort of our projections, what we expect, what you'll see is some smooth curve running into the future. That's the best. That's what we can hope for, is that the change will come smoothly. Sometimes it came smoothly in the past. Sometimes it came abruptly and surprisingly. And the more surprised you are, the less ready you are for it, the harder it is to deal with. In recent testimony before the U.S. Congress, Dr. Alley summarized what his research and that of thousands of others over recent decades has told us about climate change and its causes. So, so the first one is the physics. Um, we just cannot get away from the warming effect of CO2. It's been known for over a century. It was really clarified by the Air Force, who were actually interested in what wavelength should I use for the sensor on my heat-seeking missile. But CO2 interacts with radiation, and there's enough CO2 to make a difference. And, and we just can't get away from that physics. Uh, the second one is, is looking at, is there any other possible thing to explain this? And it really took, I'm sorry, sir, it took a few billion dollars of your money and about 30 years to say that there's nothing else that we can find in nature to do this. And this is because satellites are expensive. But someone says it's the sun. Well, then you need a satellite to watch the sun to see if the sun is getting brighter, but it isn't. And if someone says, well, it's volcanoes, then we need a history of volcanoes, and we need to know what they're doing. And if someone says it's cosmic rays, we need cosmic ray monitors. And it's taken sort of 30 years to get to the point of saying, no, we've looked really hard. We can't find anything else. It's not really surprising to see climate deniers claim that Dr. Alley's work says what it does not. That's a common ploy. But this particular instance roused the curiosity of New York Times reporter Andrew Revkin, who asked Dr. Alley to respond to this piece. Dr. Alley wrote, First off, no single temperature record from anywhere can prove or disprove global warming because the Greenland ice core is a local record, not the whole world. Some of the temperature changes are very widespread, but other of the temperature changes are antiphase between Greenland and the south, 
Still other changes are unrelated in different places. By this, Dr. Alley means that when Greenland and Antarctic ice cores are compared, except for the swings between glacial and interglacial events, abrupt temperature changes at one pole are usually balanced by opposite temperature changes at the other. The changes are local, not global, as climate deniers would have you believe. So in summary, according to Dr. Alley, using the Greenland ice core data to argue against global warming is stupid or misguided or misled, but surely not scientific. Stupid, unscientific, and misleading information is, of course, what we've come to expect from disinformation vectors like, what's up with that? But you can always count on finding the antidote, real information, directly from real scientists, here at Climate Denial, Crock of the Week. <laughs>